when everything started, it started from three guys that did machine work on NHRA stock eliminator drag race cars. And to them, that was the world. It started in a, in a room that was uh, you know, smaller than this room. We had a grinder outside and, and we had you know, a phone and uh, we had a couple of computers. And I mean, you could take an order and the guy next to you could hear it and they could go out and grind the cam and you know, put it in a box and ship it out. It was a real small operation, the world's smallest camshaft company is where we started this. It does begin with making a, a camshaft say that doesn't have a spring that'll live up to it, so we gotta make a spring. Then you gotta make a retainer that'll live up to that. And then you gotta do this, and then you get it all to working well and you start over again. And it just continues to grow. I mean, you could do things that other people thought you couldn't do or, or shouldn't do. And so, uh, you know, the process of uh, making a good company, uh, particularly in the racing industry, is, is just pushing the envelope until you, until you you know, break something and then you have to fix that to make it better so you can push the envelope more. As far as our company is concerned, I think that we weren't smart enough to do it the way everybody else did it. We found new ways, we found better ways, we revolutionized things and I think we probably made a difference on the business side of things and on the product development side. Every four or five years we'd have a meeting and we'd say, well, you know, this business is only going to go another four or five years, and so we, got, we need to think what else we're going to possibly be able to do. And that went on for, you know, years. We, we would talk about, you know, it's, it can't last very long, and uh, I guess we're probably still talking about today, you know. You know, I think the market's changing so rapidly that the, the demands and the needs of the customer is changing. And so what we have to do is change our business to deliver to them what they need, when they need. And that goes all the way through the technology, the vehicles, and if it were pure racing, that would mean one thing. But again, that's changing very rapidly too. And if it's performance street stuff, that means something different. So we have to evolve our company into something that delivers to them what they need when they need it. We're trying to solve problems. You know, we don't even sometimes know what the problem is. You know, what we've been successful at doing is, is identifying a problem and solving it. And we failed on, on a number of times where we've solved a problem that people didn't have. So if you've got no problem, you know, if, if, a, if a customer doesn't perceive, for example, a, a rock arm as a problem, then why would, you, why would you fix it? You know, what we need to do is we need to concentrate on the problems that our customers are having. Once you concentrate on those problems, you find solutions to their problems, and that's how you become successful. I'd say we're in the problem-solving business. Now, whether that's, I mean, sometimes we have to create a problem to give them a solution. And in, uh, an example of that would be if we come up with a new cam that makes 20 horsepower, for instance, we may create a problem of a valve spring that doesn't make it. So we have to continue to, to find that balance. And I think we're gonna find ourselves looking at some opportunities that maybe didn't exist before and expanding our market to some other types of uh, motorsports, whether they be ATVs or things of that nature. The fact is, there's all kinds of people out there right now trying to beat us out. Our job as a company is to provide all the infrastructure needed to keep us ahead of those people who would chase us. It's, it's the R&D, it's the minds, it's the instruments, it's the tools, it's the concepts, it's the uh, new ideas. Uh, but you have to stay scared, you have to tell people, you have to be scared. Well, what we have to do now is keep looking. And even though we can't look and say, there's crane cams where we're going. Uh, we have to look at this block that, and think, you know, someday they're not gonna make these out of uh, metal anymore, of iron or aluminum, they're gonna be some else. And we gotta begin to investigate these other goofy things. And they may turn out to be totally goofy and really bad ideas, but it might not be a block. 
You know, it might turn out to be something else. It might not be a push rod or a fan blade. I don't know what it'll be, but the curiosity, I think, is what keeps you out front and sticking to your game plan is as well. I mean, we have to continue to deliver the service regardless of what's in the box. We've got to continue to deliver the service and meet the, the demands of the customer.